Get a credit card that gives you what you need now, a low interest rate on everyday purchases, and a place to transfer high interest rate balances. The PenFed Gold Contactless Card is our lowest rate credit card. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Join PenFed, and together we can help you keep more of what's yours. Visit penfed.org slash gold card. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. The Cricket Badger Podcast IPL Daily, in association with Moonrise Cricket, Indian Premier League 2020, 13th edition, every day, every game, every spill, every fill, every triumph, all the way to the IPL Trophy. Hello everybody, welcome along. It's another edition of the Cricket Badger Podcast IPL Daily. The IPL is just uh, going from strength to strength. I'm absolutely loving it over the last few weeks and still plenty of uh, matches to go. Thank you to our sponsors, BodylineTshirts.com and Moonrise Cricket. We've just seen Delhi Capitals 161 for 7 beating Rajasthan Royals by 13 runs. Really good game that went all the way to the wire. Delhi Capitals showing their strength with the ball. We'll talk about that in just a second with my guests tonight, Claire Sanderson and Samson Peter. We'll start with you, Sam. That was a cracking game, wasn't it? Delhi Capitals, as I said, showing their strength with the ball towards the end there. Only 25 runs coming from the last five overs. Yeah, that was a really good game. I thought Delhi Capitals, you know, they were they bowled really well to actually, you know, make sure that they don't uh, have any momentum going forward. And I think it was it was a blunder by Rajasthan Royals. I mean, they were spot on at the first ten overs, and the second second half was was really bad. They were not being calculated. They're not getting those twos. Uh, they were just fine with the ones. And even uh, Tewate also, you know, in Nashwin's over, if if he had actually got a couple of runs, I think it would have been easy for them to target Rabat and Andrich. But they just messed up, uh, you know, um, the chase completely. It just shows as well, Sam, doesn't it, that uh, Rahul Tawatia, he can't do it every single time, can you? You, know, you can't leave him with an impossible task every single time and expect him to get across the line. True, that, that's what we, we told her. I mean, even last time I was surprised that he actually pulled it. He did it twice, but uh, that's that's not going to be easy, especially when you're facing quality bowlers like Andrich, who's bowling at one one fifty plus, and Rabada, who's who's very good at death. You can't always do it. You can't always push it till the uh, last overs, and that's what happened today. They're not being calculated, and uh, that's what happened. Even Shares was Shares is actually a very good batsman when compared to Devadia. They should have sent him ahead, but. Yeah, I mean, they they just believed his guts. I thought they they thought they could finish off the job with him, but apparently it didn't happen. Uh, and Claire, across to you. Um, first of all, good news that you're on the mend, aren't you? You've had a bit of a COVID scare, but uh, good that you're uh, still with us. Yeah, fighting fit, fighting fit. Um, at least it's given me uh, plenty of time to keep up with all this cricket. You know, I've seen uh, literally every ball because I've not been able to go anywhere. So that's uh, oh, there's always a positive, <laughs> uh, and not only the test. Exactly. Yeah, the, the test was positive. It's also positive. You can watch the IPL now for two weeks. Um, Delhi Capitals, uh, a team that obviously lost to Mumbai in the last game, but that was a close game. And I don't think you can read too much into that. Generally speaking, Delhi have been superb and they showed it again today. They they got the, you know, I always think that teams that go a long way in competitions like this are teams that get into close games like this one today and, and come out on top more often than not. And Delhi are doing that. Yeah, they certainly are. I mean, um, I think the bowling really has just been exceptional, and there's sort of no real let up in it. They've got the you know the formidable South African opening pair, and then Ravi Ashwin, and I thought um, Tushar uh, Dishpande today. I mean, what a game for him! His first ever game, he bowls over two and twenty, gets Stokes out, and then you know just uh, finishes it off nicely. So yeah, what an exceptional performance I thought. In terms of that, I mean, the batting, you know, again, pretty solid up at the top, apart from, of course, the first ball, Beauty, which, um, you know, Archer cleaned up pretty sure with. But apart from that, quite a sort of solid batting performance. You know, Darwin and Andre Asaya really nailed it. So, yeah, really solid all-round performance. Really enjoyable to see I'm feeling a bit sorry for Joffre Archer because I think he's bowling brilliantly in this tournament. He's now got the second most wickets in the competition. He's got 12. Um, his economy rate is 6.56, which is pretty decent for somebody that bowls in the uh, in the kind of the prime hitting overs. But he's not getting the support from the rest of his team, is he? Yeah, no, he's kind of the lone ranger, which I think 
that's the difference in these two teams. You know, Ribada and Norcia opening up, and then, you know, like I say, Ashton in the middle, whereas Archer's a bit more of a lone ranger. I mean, he's just exceptional, three for 19. But, you know, you can't do it all on your own. So, yeah, a bit of a shame for him. But um, still, you know, good for him to get in those solid performances. It all, it's all experience for him. And you can't always be on the winning team. But, yeah, he's learning from it. So, hopefully, he's having a good time. And Sam Rajasthan Royals, looking at their position now on the table, they only got KXIP beneath them. 6.7 games played. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mention you, Claire. Um, 6.7 games played, and they're, they're kind of putting themselves back into a problematic region. They've got, a, obviously, a, a game in hand on Sunrises and CSK on the same points with them, but unless they start getting back into winning ways soon, they're going to be in problems, aren't they? Because we're running out of games now in the IPL. We're in the second half of this tournament, and if they start don't win the next couple, it, it, you start to get into last-chance saloon kind of situations, don't you? Yeah, I think even in the halfway mark, I think their batting order is not properly set. They're trending Ben Stokes to open the innings with Josh Butler, and just, they're just trying to experiment a lot uh, with with their batting order, and that's the reason I think they're failing. I think if imagine if uh, Ben Stokes was uh, playing down the order, I think things would have been really dif- uh, really different. And I think they should find the right kind of batting combination for them to work out. The bowling looks really good. It's just that they have to. Uh, you know, work out a best uh, you know, batting order and I think they should be sorted. They have a good team. They have depth in their uh, batting and they have um, you know, they have very good bowling lineup as well. I think one, one of the strongest uh, team I can say in that uh, in that seven uh, in you know that six to seven spots, I think they should they should make a good comeback if they figure out their batting lineup. Just a correction mark from my point of view. I'd not refreshed my table, so Rajasthan have actually played the same amount of games as SRH and CSK, so it's even worse in terms of their situation in the table. The one thing, Claire, though, we'll, we'll come to Kings Eleven, which is the team you're representing on this podcast. They are at bottom, two points from seven games, but because SRH, CSK, RR, even KK are in fourth place, they're three wins behind fourth, aren't they? And it could be worse, couldn't it? Because everybody's beating each other, nobody's getting away from them. Yeah, well, that that sort of chunk in the middle is, um, you know, I guess somewhere within reach. What I was thinking, though, was if, you know, what we don't want is, like, the teams at the top to be running away points-wise because that puts them out of reach of the rest of the table. So I was kind of thinking it might have been good if the Royals had won today because Delhi wouldn't have been so far up the table. But, you know, I guess, well, it is what it is. We are where we are. And, you know, uh, either the luck will turn for uh, the Kings eleven, or it won't. And sometimes I think you just got to accept that there's a thing like the rubber, the green. And if it's not going your way, it's just not going your way. I think you're chasing fourth, really, though, aren't you? You're trying to overhaul KKR there because DC and Mumbai, probably even the Royal Challengers, they look fairly solid in those playoff positions. They're the three teams that have impressed me most, Claire, in this tournament so far. KKR, Sunrisers, Chennai, Rajasthan Royals have defeats written all over them they can win a few but they've got uh, a losing as many aren't they and they're the teams that KXIP could maybe catch well yeah I, I mean for sure that bottom half of the table is wide open um, well it's fairly <laughs> fairly open I'm not sure about wide open you know like I guess nobody's out of reach just yet but um, I guess tomorrow we'll uh, will uh, yeah be very telling one way or the other I mean I, you know if we're talking about Kings Eleven. I think they've been really unlucky, you know, the, the, from the one shot to the, you know, the big gun, Chris Gale ended up in hospital. Then the last match goes down to last over. They get bowled out of the match by Narine, who then gets called for an illegal bowling action. You know, Maxi misses out by a quarter of an inch. So the really strange thing is that the two guys with the most runs in the whole competition both from Kings Eleven, who are at the bottom of the table. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? All these really strange sort of things that are going on, that in one sense you'd say, yeah, they could still do it, but I guess it's sort of drawing on all your inner strengths. They've got an inexperienced captain who's got kind of the weight of the world on his shoulders. I guess if he goes in and blasts it all over and gets out, they'll have said he should be more cautious, but then if he goes in and he's cautious, he's too cautious, and you know, I, I just think it's it's been, there's been a lot of unluckiness, if that's a thing. So, yeah, maybe if the luck falls for him, you never know. 
Moonrise is a sports engagement website to allow sports fans to learn from the very best. Get a personal video message recorded for a fan's special occasion. Have a professional cricketer as your next coach by getting video feedback or having a 30-minute conversation with some of the world's best players. Players such as Jimmy Neesham, Colin Munro, Tammy Beaumont, Danny Wyatt, Monty Panasar. Visit MoonriseSports.com or go to Moonrise Sports on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Moonrise Cricket, let's play. We'll, we'll keep our cup powder dry a little bit on Kings Eleven because uh, let's do the Moonrise moment of the match for the game that we've just seen. I'll start with you, Sam. What would be your Moonrise moment of this uh, Delhi win against Rajasthan Royals? Mine would definitely be and it's over to Josh Butler. That over was amazing to watch. I think that would definitely be my Moonrise cricket moment of the match. That's pretty exciting, wasn't it? Yep, what an over. I really enjoyed watching watching him bowl like that, 150 plus. Oh my God, that is brilliant. How about you, Claire? What would be your Moonrise moment of the match today? Well, I mean, seeing Butler's stumps fly would have, it was pretty impressive. But then I think, then again, what about the, you know, the youngster, um, you know, he comes in and uh, like I say, over two and 20, his first ever game, pretty exciting for him to sort of achieve that. So um, just so that we're not all going for the same one. That's what I'll go for. Two to this panday. I, I must admit, the this panday thing, uh, it's amazing, isn't it? You're making your debut. You're obviously nervous. But it must show something to him that the captain has the confidence to give him those overs. It must give him a little bit of a lift. And then the fact, obviously, he goes to bed tonight having delivered, that must fill him with a lot of confidence for the uh, the next few games. It's a terrific little story, that, isn't it? And, um, within this match today... I think the um, the one I would throw into the mix as well would be the first ball of the final over. Ajinkya Rahani's uh, stop on the boundary when he caught the ball, was toppling yeah. over the boundary rope and he threw the ball back in. It wasn't quite Nicholas Poran, but it was, uh, I think, more legitimate than Nicholas Poran. In the in the context of the game, if uh, Tawatiya had got off to a, a six-hitting start in that over, you'd probably have started to back the Rajasthan Royals, wouldn't you? And they only got one run from that in the end and uh, Tuati had turned around to Gopal and uh, gave him a real earful because he hadn't run properly so I thought that was a that was a really um, good bit of cricket there from Ajinkya Rahani um, I don't know what to go for with this one Claire I'm going to let you decide you choose the moment of the match today of, of the nominations you've heard which one are we going to go for <laughs> Well, actually, even though I picked this Monday, I'm going to say Butler because, yeah, I had noticed the ball before he uh, he got bowled as well. He was way out of his crease backing up at the other end. And I just thought, mate, well, I think I tweeted it. Mate, you're pushing it here. And then, you know, his stumps went. And I thought, well, there you go, mate. You can't get him at one end, get him at the other. Yeah, there you go. Just put that. The Moonrise moment of the match today. <laughs> Want to get your game the very best it can be? The future of coaching. Talk to a pro. 30-minute video conversation. Video analysis from players at the top of their game. Video shout-outs. Get a personalised message from a pro. Great for birthdays, congratulations messages, a prank or a simple hello. Visit MoonriseSports.com or go to Moonrise Sports on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Moonrise Cricket. Let's play. Right, let's have a look ahead to your teams then, Samson and Claire. Uh, we talked a little bit about Kings Eleven, so let's talk about um, RCB, Sam. I really like them this year. I, I For me, uh, I've got very, a very soft spot for Mumbai Indians, but I really don't care who wins between Delhi Capitals, Mumbai Indians, Royal Challengers, Bangalore, because they've all got really nicely balanced sides. And, and the challengers this time around have come to properly challenge, haven't they? They've had a few years in the doldrums, but Virat Kohli's got them... Got a side under his wing there that is starting to fire. Everybody's delivering. Yeah, but I think finally Virat has that team, uh, you know, where he can where he can really show off his captain's skills, where people are delivering it. Not, it was not like last time where Siraj and Umesh would just give away all the hard work that is put in by the uh, put in by the batsmen. And I think this time he has a very good team, which the bowlers where they can deliver. You see Washington delivering in the power plays. He's been a shell coming in, bowling aggressively, picking wickets for him. And Navjib Saini has been bowling brilliant. I've been so impressed with him in the season. He's bowling with so much confidence. He's bowling at York as well. And he's just keeping maintaining that line and then really well. And Chris Morris, what an addition he has been. I think he's, he's when he came into the 
uh, when he came into the side, I think it has given a lot of uh, confidence to the whole bowling unit. And even Isudana, though he's expensive, he's picking wickets at the crucial time. And I think the bowling is what has been improved. The batting has always been good for Royal Challengers Bangalore. It was never a problem. But this time, bowling, I think they're delivering it. I'm so happy. I cannot tell you how happy I am this season. And this because last year it was a lot of stress when when we finished the batting first I was always used to be worried but this time the bowlers are really turning around one of the things that illustrates that Sam is that you look at the top seven wicket takers for RCB this time around none of them are going for more than 10 and over which uh, in the context of some of these matches is, is pretty impressive but um, the other thing is the two spinners um, is Vendra Chahal He's taken 10 wickets at an economy rate of 7.07. Washington Sunder, not quite as many wickets, just the five. But his economy rate is under five. It's 4.9. Morris has come in, as you said. He's taken five wickets at 4.5 and over. When you've got three bowlers in your side that are being that economical, but also taking wickets, that's not a bad little trick to have if you're Virat Kohli, is it? Yes, definitely. I mean, the ballers are being really economical, especially in the power play where we used to leak a lot of runs before, but we have it under control because we have Washington Sundar and Chris Morris going that uh, crucial tight overs. And, you know, we have uh, Chael coming in. He can, he can, he can ball aggressively and he can get wickets. And that, that's really brilliant. Uh, you know, uh, we, they just have a brilliant uh, bowling unit and three, even now they've seen he just had one bad uh, match, mm-hmm. but the rest of the games he's been uh, really economical as well. So I think it's, 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 it's a really good bowling unit. They're just delivering it perfectly, like just like Virat wants. And can, cannot be more proud of Royal Challengers Bangalore. Oh, I like it. I like it. Uh, get behind your team, Sam. Bodylinet-shirts.com. Browse the finest collection of cricketing t-shirts on the web. Hundreds of original cricket designs for cricket players and fans alike. Featuring everyone and everything from Larwood to Leach and Cow Corner to Chin Music at BodylineT-Shirts.com. And you can get 10% off your first order using the code BADGER at checkout. BodylineT-Shirts.com. T-shirts for the discerning cricket fan. Claire, it's harder to get behind your team, I know, but the... um, that, that Maxwell hit that you, you mentioned from um, the game at the weekend, which landed millimetres, didn't it, short of the rope, which could have could have uh, sealed a super over. That, to me, summed up Kings eleven season so far. So close, but yet so far. You know, they, they've probably... Yeah. yeah they've, they've won one game. They could have easily won another three, couldn't they? Easily won another three. And it's just not happening for them, is it? Yeah, no, as, I guess as I was saying earlier, it, they're just falling short. You know, they've got the guys who are getting the most runs up there at the top and still not getting the wins. So, yeah, um, I do, you know, I don't know, I believe a bit in the rub of the green and it's gone against them. Oh, you need luck in That's, T20, you know, don't you? you? You definitely need luck in yeah, T20. Yeah, and when it's not going your way, it's not going your way. I mean, I have to admit, I was, I think I was hiding behind the sofa for the uh, last ball. So I, did, I didn't actually see it um, until I saw the replays because I just could have watched. So um, anyway, Max's birthday today. Maybe I'll get a bit of birthday luck. You never know. <laughs> that might, um, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, is it written in the stars? I don't know. It's, uh, it's, like I said, right at the very beginning, on paper, they look a strong team. It's just been able to sort of harness it all together and it all coming right for them. Do you think the problem is that, I mean, you mentioned the fact that, I mean, Rahul's leading the race for the the orange cap. He's got 387 runs. Some people would say maybe not quite quickly enough, 134 strike rate, though I think it's pretty decent for an opener. Agarwal's there with 337. Poran's had a few good knocks. He's got 212. But then if you go to the fourth in their list of run scorers this season, Maxwell's got 58. That that's there's yeah, a big so, there's uh, a big gap there, isn't there? There's, they need some other batsmen to come to the party and actually take the bit of pressure off Rahul Agarwal and Poran. Yeah, definitely. There's not that depth in the batting, and I think um, something else I was sort of chewing over was being like Jimmy Neesham and uh, Chris Jordan, both of whom we know can play. You know, the kind of Stoinis type game yeah. where they can come in, not like he did today, but ordinarily smash it all over. Sometimes really good at the depth. Sometimes neither of them has come off, so they've kind of lacked that fifth option and that, you know, somebody lower down who can just come in and maybe support one of the other guys. You know, like, I guess Rahul's playing that innings where he can hang around and hang around if somebody's going to take the momentum at the other end. 
but those players just aren't coming through. So, like I say, you know, the captain is left with this thing, what do I do? Stick around for the end or do I throw my wicket away now, chance it and throw my wicket away? So, like I say, a lot of mis- misfortune and, you know, players just not fully turning up. So, they've had a few days off. Let's hope they've regrouped, you know, maybe having the boss back among the ranks might do some good. I've heard him making some quite motivational team talks. Or, um, we'll get to know, that in a second. Uh, we're going to get we're going to get you to give a team talk to the KXIP dressing room in just a second. Um, just a quick word on their bowling though. Mohammed Shami, seven wickets after three games, ten after seven. So he's not really progressed too much with the with the ball. Sheldon Cottrell's been very similar. He's got six wickets. Ravi Bishnoi has been good. He's taken eight, but. It's the same story with the ball, isn't it? You know, you you can criticise the batsman, but unless the bowlers are actually taking some wickets and, and bowling economically, there's very much two elements to a, a T20 side and the ball's just as important, isn't it? Yeah, well, like I say, that, and that fifth bowling option hasn't really come through. No. I mean, I don't know, with the second half of the competition, um, the you know, wickets slowing down a bit and maybe the spinners coming a bit more into their own, whether that opens up for like Robert and Ravi Bishnoi and um, Bishnoi and Rajiv could really be beneficial in the second half. But like I say, you just need somebody to sandwich it all together a bit. So yeah, it's all right getting the runs, but if you can't close it off with the bowling, then you're again, unlucky. Well, Clay, you've become very famous on this podcast for your motivational team talks, which, to be quite honest, have not worked, have they, so far? So we'll see if we can make a change with that this evening. But let's start off with um, Sam. Sam, you've already shown your, you know, expressed your pride at how RCB are playing. I'm going to give you a minute max. You're going in the dressing room just before the game tomorrow, and you're able to tell the team exactly what you think of them. How proud are you of RCB? The door's open. In you go. Minute starts now. Okay, I would start by telling them, you know what, boys, we've done this. We've done well so far. The first leg, we've, we've done everything best we could. But the bowling is firing. The batting is firing. We just have to keep the momentum going. And I think this is the, one of the best teams that we've had so far. And we just have to continue what we're doing the best. And I don't think this game should be any difficult. And we just have to continue doing our best. And I think this is going to be an easy, uh, it's going to be an easy win for us. So let's just do this. Easy win, Claire. The RCB lads, they're slapping Sam on the back as he walks out the door there saying, thanks, mate. Thanks for coming. Claire, you've now got to go into that Kings Eleven dressing room. The same rules apply to you. Slightly different kind of team talk, I guess, that you're going to give your side. But how are you going to get over the fact that RCB think this is going to be easy? Right, OK, well, I'm going to take a t- different tack in completely with this one. So, um I'm going to go right back to my Yorkshire route and I'm going to deliver this one in the style of a very famous Yorkshire captain. So actually my team talk starts from the bottom of the stairs. And the first thing that the whole team are going to hear is my thundering up the stairs. (laughs) Yeah. And then as the dressing room door comes open, the first thing they're going to see is my back fly across the dressing room, hit the lockers and go flying out onto the balcony. Then, as I enter the dressing room, I'm going to pick somebody up by the scruff of the neck and hang them up on one of the dressing room pegs. Chris Gale. Again, I don't think it'd be Chris Gale. I was weighing this up and thinking it might be poor old Nicholas Poran. He looks quite short, but anyway. (laughs) And uh, then I'm going to give them all the biggest dressing down with the fruitiest language they've ever heard. Then I'm going to stroll over into the corner, pick up the sporting light and sit there and drink tea while they all just soak that up and figure out what I think of them. Probably later on, while I'm on the balcony, I'll be singing all the praises, because I know they can do this. I know they've got it in them. I know they've got the skills, but maybe I've just been way too soft. So I'm going to, yeah, like I say, go back to my Yorkshire roots. You can figure out where I got that speech from. (laughs) Right. Um, Kings 11, they are fully charged. So are RCB after Sam's emotional. Well, he told them that they're the best RCB team ever. You don't get better than that, do you? Claire and Sam, thank you very much for joining me on the podcast today. Right, cheers, Sam. Cheers, James. And thank you for joining us out there every single day. It's the IPL Daily taking you through until November the 10th and probably beyond as we review the tournament after it's finished. There's plenty of games to come. So stick with us on the IPL podcast. Thank you to BodylineTshirts.com for the support of the podcast and to Moonrise Cricket. Much appreciated from those guys. I've been James and I'll see you the same time tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Join us every day throughout IPL 2020. Follow us on Twitter at cricket underscore badger. Join in the fun. We'll see you again tomorrow.
The available AKG 36 speaker sound system in the Cadillac Escalade provides 360 degree sound, so you hear studio sound on the road. The 2021 Cadillac Escalade never stop arriving.